afternoon. Welcome to the Board of Education work session. Please stand and repeat the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, Dr. Kim, would you like to begin your presentation? Absolutely. So the presentation really is going to be led by um, Ms. Landgraf, but we just wanted to, um, and, and of course this is um, subject to any input any and all input from you. We put together uh, some information that we think will be useful for the discussion. So we included some information from the county's budget. We included some information and in how we allocate our own funds uh, and what funds we have. And we also included some um, requests, So and, and not very many. So we um, can talk about priorities and, and that kind of thing. So without a lot of further ado, we're going to have uh, Ms. Landgraf get started, but we also, I just wanted to remind you about the folder of sort of background information that we sent you. Um, so five-year trends, that kind of data was in there just so that you can reference that anytime you need that. And as we have this discussion today, if there are other documents that we need to pop into that folder, then we'll do that just so that you have resources at your fingertips as we talk about these things. And thank you for that coming so ahead of the game. It gave us a lot of time to really ponder it. So that snow day, that. you know, helped, yeah. <laughs> helped us to think about things a little bit. So great. Thank you, Ms. Landgraf. Okay. Um, this is a budget workshop, so we do want your input, and please interrupt, ask questions, give us input anytime throughout this as we go along. Um, today, what we hope to give you is some background information on both the board and the county. Um, the county government funding allocations to us, some of our revenue projections, some of our expenditure projections, and then we've already given you some trend data um, as far as what we have spent in each of these categories over the last five years. <clears throat> so we're going to start with um, county information. And this is the county, this is a uh, slide of what the county's current budget is. And you can see this is a revenue and approximately 49%, almost 50% of their budget comes from property taxes, and another 36% of it comes from, almost 37% of it comes from income taxes. So that's where a majority of their money comes from. You've got recordation taxes, other taxes, and some other small fees and whatnot that the county's able to um, fund their budget. As far as what that looks like for us, this is how the county allocates their budget. So you can see the largest piece here at the bottom is the Board of Education, and that's 41.48% of their budget. Um, the next largest piece is public safety, and then you get a debt service, you've got public works, you've got the general government. Um, my point in showing you this slide is the Board of Education's 41% of the county budget. If you look at where we were, 10 years ago, we were at, this is the, now, 10 years ago, we were 46% of their budget. And then if you look at where we were 15 years ago, we were at 50% of their budget. So we're losing, um, losing dollars, I guess you would say. We're losing percent of their budget. Over the last 15 years, you can see back in 1997-98, we were almost 55% of their budget. Over that same period, over the period of time, we are now down to 41% of their budget. So we are losing our, how much of the county budget is coming to us. That's not to say that there aren't other things, public safety, um, you know, those types of things that <clears throat> shouldn't be getting a larger percent of their budget. But I think the 12% loss over a period of that many years is pretty significant for us. This is in terms of real dollars, and this basically is just a, a slide showing. This is the information that produced the, the slide that what, we just saw. What year was it that we lost that the county went to um, taking care of our land instead of us, like the lawnmower, you know, cutting grass and 
Ms. George, Parking let me lot. take a look at that. That's probably been about 10, 12, Okay, it's been a lot. Years. Okay. Yeah, it's been a lot. I mean, okay. Yeah. I was just I can find trying to see if it factored into where it factored into that loss. I'll look that up now. Well, it doesn't really because they still allocate that money to us and it sh still shows as an expense on our budget. Oh, it does? Oh, okay. Right. So so it's not really going to show there. So you said 12% in the last 10 years? Since 97. Yeah, since, since what year was it? Oh, oh, here. I can't. This was oh, 1997, 98. So okay. that was what? 20 years. 20 years. Yeah, 20 20 down 12 years. Thank you. Yeah. So we've lost 12% in 20 years. And but really, if you go over to 99, 2000, we stayed steady those two years, 97, 98, 99. We really didn't start losing out till 2000, and we lost almost every year. There in 2008 or 9, we had a little <coughs> bit of an increase, dropped considerably, came back up around 45 three years ago, and steady dropping again, big dropping. Now this Back Sorry. in 2011-12, um, if you remember, yeah. we got that 10% yeah. right. uh, reduction in the allocation. It the was 2011-12? Why did I think it was around 2008? It's 2011-12. Okay. 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 Is there any information on like um, state funding that made up for some of the 12% or also comparing that to the population growth of the students enrolled? Um, I can get you that information. I do not have that as a slide prepared for today. Okay. But did we generally have a steady decrease? We didn't have a steady decrease in students, though. A few, a yeah. few, a few, a few. Yeah, no big increases. No large Just increases. Okay. So it's, it's and, our and our state funding really doesn't fluctuate like the county does, does it? The state funding and the federal funding is usually pretty across the board for all counties right depending on their size and their enrollment right. it's a percentage of and because of the, the, the funding formula right and really back in I'm gonna say the early 2000s when the Thornton funding kicked in right we got some increases in state right. funding but right it's been pretty consistent we'll, right. we'll look at state funding here in a little bit but they don't give us extra state because we get less county. No, right. no. The, the funding formula separated. for the state is is set and right. basically mm -hmm. it um, based on our enrollment, and then in comparison to enrollment in other counties, it may fluctuate a little bit. But it it is pretty. Um, it's a set formula. So it's not our a situation where the well. county looks at it like, well, you got a little more state funding, so we can cut back here this year. Well, I'm not going to say no to that um, because back in when the Thornton funding first kicked in, we saw that around the state mm -hmm. um, with a lot of the counties where the, the state was then kicking in more money and the counties were backing off on what they were allocating to each of the counties. But um, overall, no, no that's generally <laughs> okay. not okay. the case. So you'd like to see what the state <coughs> funding increases over that same period of time have been? Yeah, I was just trying to and understand if there's some kind of trend where we see perhaps there's an explanation for the 12% decrease because we've seen an increase from state funding or also, um, you know, the trends of what the population was for student enrollment okay. um, in comparison to the 12% decrease. Just some kind of context for the trend. That's just what I was trying to understand. I can do that. Okay. Um, so that was just the actual figures. And then we go on to what our operating budget looks like. Our operating budget, um, which was uh, $90 million last year, 57% of our budget comes from the county. And then 35% of it comes from the state. And then we have some restricted money, which makes up about another 6 or 7%. And they're all grants, and they're very restricted in how they can be used. And then there's a small little piece of the pie that comes from building use funds, interest income, tuition that we receive from other counties, those types of things. Here, in terms of real dollars, this is what it looks like for the current fiscal year. We're getting $55.5 million of our revenue is coming from the, from the county. Um, 34 million is coming from the state, and then we have 700,000 in other revenues. 
Now, I want to remind you that about 235 of that, I believe, is the figure, um, was money that we allocated out of our fund balance last year to make our budget balance. <clears throat> Restricted funds, we get about 4.8 million in federal, another 800,000 in state, and then oh, other funds, which would be um, like the Family Support Center, those kinds of things would make up the additional response. Partnering for youth is part of those other funds. So one of the questions that we get asked all the time is about maintenance of effort. And this is always a, a um, bone of contention, I would say, with the county governments, is there is a state law on the books that says the county government has to fund us at a certain level. And essentially, the way the funding works um, they are required to fund us as much in the current year as they did in the prior year on a per pupil basis. So if we have increasing enrollment, then they would have to fund us more. If we have decreasing enrollment, they would be allowed to fund us less. This is just a, a real uh, basic, simple example in, to help everybody understand what this is all about. Um, so if we had 1,000 students and the county government gave us $7 million, that would be $7,000 per student. If next year we had 1,001 students, then they would have to give us 7,000 more dollars. Um, so it's, that's the basic concept. In 2012, the state decided that they needed to add more teeth to the maintenance of effort um, law, and so they changed it a little bit. <clears throat> and now they have a condition that's called um, education effort that in addition to just on a per pupil basis meeting that number, they also have to make the education effort. Education effort is they take the total wealth of the county and they divide the appropriation given to the Board of Education by that figure and they come up with a ratio. Our ratio for fiscal year 2018 was 1.23 percent of the wealth of the county. Overall, they then compare that to the state as a whole. The state's percent was 1.28. So our percent for Queen Anne's County was less than what the state percent was. Therefore, we failed our education effort. When we fail the education effort, then they look at three different factors and they say, okay, county government, you have to increase your maintenance of effort by a certain amount of money. And we're going to look at these three factors to determine which factor, and it's the lesser of the three factors, which, what, what the amount is that you have to increase your effort. So it is the lesser of the increase in the county wealth or the state wealth or 2.5%, whichever is less. In fiscal year 2008, as I said, the county's percent was 1.23 percent, the state percent was 1.28. We failed to meet education effort, therefore the additional amount of maintenance of effort is going to be imposed, and the county's increase in wealth per pupil was 2.52 percent, the state increase was only 1.5 percent, and then comparison to the, the 2.5 percent. So the state average is what they will have to increase their maintenance of effort. Then we go on to the actual calculation of maintenance of effort. We begin the calculation with the highest allocation for the 2008-18 school year, which was the $55.5 million. We divide that by our enrollment from last school year to come up with what a per pupil amount would be. Is that the end of the school year or the beginning of the school year? year. September 30th. 30th. It, it, there's September 30th is when we give our <laughs> official enrollment okay. numbers. Okay. Okay. And those are the numbers that the state uses when they put their um, formula okay. together. So we use the September 30th 16 enrollment numbers to come up with okay. what the per pupil um, allocate appropriation would be. So in this case, we took the $55.5 million, we divided it by our 7,462 and a quarter students, and we came up with the per pupil amount was 
$1,436.80 per pupil. And now because they have this additional amount has been imposed upon them, we have to add another 1.5% to that figure. So that brings our adjusted per pupil amount to $7,548.35 per pupil. That then gets multiplied by our current September 30th enrollment. And that when you do that multiplication, that means that the required maintenance of effort for the fiscal year 2019 school year is $56,884.80 million, $56 million, $884,381, which is an increase in maintenance of effort of $1,389,102. So just to be clear, because this is a point that needs to be clarified, right. while it is an <coughs> increase right from here. last year, it is still maintenance of effort. It's not something in addition to maintenance of effort. The it county doesn't see it that way, though. But it is. Right. <laughs> the commissioners never see it that way. No. Right. But it is. Do but they know about this? Do they know? Oh, yeah. All right. Well, they know because this was the situation what last, last year. year. Remember, that's yeah. what happened last year. Yeah. Right. But I mean, I mean it's they almost like the maintenance of effort this year is paying <laughs> us for the shortfall from last year. For the number of students. Because, right, students because and the, the students per pupil between per the pupil. 16 year right. and the 17. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So without anything in addition to MOE, we're really not getting new money. We're getting money that had it been allocated correctly and a little better a year ago, maintenance of effort might have been different. It's great. Had they given yes. us if they had get, additional year, funding above MOE of $1.3 million, million dollars, they would be at zero, really. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure how not the Not really, because of the out. ratios and the formula, right. but, but if, they, if, mm -hmm. they had, if they had met the education effort number, exactly. exactly. then yes, the allocation to us would have had to have been higher. Off the top of my head, I don't know how much higher it would have had to have been in order for them to meet that number. Um, but then they wouldn't have the additional amount um, imposed upon them for the But we do year. hear this every year. What we give you today, we have to give you forever. And they don't like being. Can it work in the in opposite that. though? <clears throat> like if we come, if they came in, so they so they came in over education effort. Would, I mean, could that ever work against us? Or is it they could never go back below what not the former years MOE? Um, if we had declining enrollment, then they could. Uh, okay. Right. Some we were losing students as West. long as it, they were giving us the same amount on a per pupil basis. Gotcha. Okay. If we had less students, then they would be able to give us less. And you'll see, um, I think we have a slide in here that shows some of that, where there was a couple years where we did have declining enrollment and they were able to cut us. There are some counties that are really in trouble with that, continually Can't. losing enrollment. Can't. Can't. Um, the, they didn't give it to us last year. What was right? And actually, the next slide. Okay, we got it. Can, um, wait. I just want to understand. You, you mentioned the state um, poured more teeth into the maintenance of effort law. Right. Do we know what happened to make, like, what was happening that made them do that? Um, several counties across the state, and you'll see. Um, when we go actually when we go to the next slide. Um, You'll see we had a big dip in maintenance of effort. That was the year they cut us four and a half million dollars, and that was the only year that they didn't meet the maintenance of effort clause. There were several counties across the state that did that that year. And basically, there was no teeth in the law, mm -hmm. and the county government said, okay, so we didn't meet maintenance of effort. Mm -hmm. What does and that mean? Yeah, there was no reprimand. There was right. right. There exactly. was no repercussions so was, for it. Was there some specific bill that was passed for the language? Yes, there was a bill that was passed in 2012 okay. that changed the language and put some teeth behind it because now, if the county government decides that they're not going to meet maintenance of effort, mm -hmm. then the state will withhold their general funds mm -hmm. 
and give them to the Board of Education to make up. Do we know what that bill number is? I could research it. I'm just curious to read the language. I, I'll, I'll I don't go research know. it. We said it was 2012. Head, 2012. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think if you do maintenance of effort, 2012 comes it up. It comes up. The okay. whole history does. Yeah. I just want to research my own background on it. Thank you. So essentially what I'm trying to show on this slide is the yellow line here across the center marked at the zero axis. That's our maintenance of effort. So you can see our county has actually funded us over maintenance of effort with the exception of one, two years, and then one year they funded us way below maintenance of effort, which was the year that we were cut the four and a half million dollars. Um, in terms of real numbers, this is what it looked like. So you can see there was a third year here that they barely funded us over maintenance of effort. It was only a quarter of a percent over maintenance of effort, but they did they fund did. over maintenance of effort. You can also see on this that the required maintenance of effort in some years was a decrease, and those were the years where we would have had declining enrollment. Mm -hmm. So in this particular year, you can see in 2011, um, they were actually able to fund us less than they had the year before, but the maintenance of effort was less. So they gave us, in total dollars, less money, but they still met the maintenance of effort. Which is, like, speaking out of both sides of your mouth. <laughs> Okay, then last week, at the end of last week, I also received the funding projections for next year from the state. Mm -hmm. So for each of the different um, programs, we have the foundation program, the GCEI, transportation, um, state comp, we actually lost some money in because we are having fewer um, free and reduced meals, students, um, English language, or limited English proficiency, special education, and then the net taxable income adjustment. That's an adjustment that basically they're looking at. Um, it used to be they used September 30th data as far as wealth goes. And then there was some talk at the state level. Well, a lot of people file extensions on their tax returns. And so their tax returns don't actually get filed until the middle of October. So can we look at the November numbers and see if there's a difference in um, what would have been provided to the counties had they used the true mm -hmm. income figures instead of the ones without the extended returns. And so they've been doing that the last couple of years, and we've been getting an additional amount of money because the income or the wealth at November is a little bit higher based on those income tax numbers. Um, we get a reimbursement for non public placement. We do. Um, there's a formula that's used to determine how much we have to pay mm -hmm. of a non-public placements tuition, and then the county picks up the well, additional amount. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if um, we have a $50,000 placement, they have what they call a 300% number, which is supposed to be 300% of our per pupil. We have to pay that, and then we pay 30% of anything in excess of that and the state picks up 70% of the excess of our 300% number. But our non-public is only $200,000. What is our actual non-public cost to us? Cost to us? It depends it's year really to raised year. recently. Um, I want to say on how this many we have. year we have I want $400,000 worth of non-public yeah. um, expenditures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's and that is we based can't on gauge it. I know. Right. You know, just you can which students it can change are in. tomorrow. Yes, it can. A new student can come into this county tomorrow that we're responsible for because they've been through the whole gambit and that is our obligation ethically and legally to educate that child regardless of our cost or where. Right. That's right. So, essentially what we end up with is the state's going to allocate $329,000 more dollars next year towards Queen Anne's County for that. 
So what does that mean? Well, at this point, our required maintenance of effort from the county, our state aid um, projections. So we're anticipating that we're going to have $1.7 million new money next year. Just through maintenance of effort and state aid? Yes. So then we go to the expenditure side of our budget. <coughs> and this is how our budget is currently broken down. We're required by state law to report our budget or allocate our budget in these um, categories that are actually written in state law. Um, administration, <coughs> mid-level administration, and you can see down through you know, operations, maintenance, um, employee benefits, it, they, at the state level, they call those fixed charges, so you'll see those terms used interchangeably as we go through some of this. And then the restricted programs. As a pie graph, this is what that looks like. Um, obviously, a majority of our money is spent in instruction and special ed. If you put those two pieces together, that's obviously more than 50% of our budget. And then the other largest piece is employee benefits. And that also has to do with instruction and special education because those are those teachers that are, um, you know, in those areas, their, their benefits. Uh, the next largest piece of our pie is transportation, and most of that has to do with our bus contracts. The largest piece of it. The state also requires we take each one of those categories of the budget and break them down by subcategory, if you will. And they call those objects. Um, I have a quick question. Um, sure. Are you saying in the pie that the category for salary um, salaries that you have? Can you go back one to the pie? Well, actually, if we go forward one, I think you'll like this pie better because okay. this. <laughs> right. Um, so we see salaries are fifty-seven million, <clears throat> employee benefits are twenty million. So if you look at look at the pie in okay. this, okay. you can see that 59% of our budget is in salaries. Another almost 21% is employee benefits. So 80% of the money that we spend is in people. That was the part I was curious about where we were in that. And I don't know how we get that across because that <coughs> key point Fixed. seems to be mit, missed every time there's a discussion about how we spend our money and where. Um, between salary and employee benefits, I can't do the math, 59, 69, 79, only 21% are those other areas. Right. And actually, if you were to look at contracts, you know, that's Take another 7% that yeah. of our budget. And a majority of our contracts are either the bus transportation or related services for special education, OTs, PTs, speech therapists. I was going to say, that can include <clears throat> people, mm -hmm. and salaries they, yes, and benefits. That is people. And I guess one of their plot, spots of argument is health care, and that's under employee benefits. Yes. Basically something we could tweak. We don't want to, but... <clears throat> Well, we as, always a, argue it, that. as we go through this and we get through <coughs> some of the things that we're suggesting, that is an area that we're looking at. Okay. Um, so we go on. Back in, the, in fiscal year 2014, and the reason why I use fiscal year 2014 is that is the latest data. Um, if you remember a little book that used to come out, it's called the Maryland Fact Book, put yep. out by MSDE. Um, that's the, the last time that that book was put out was for fiscal year 2014. And essentially this is um, our cost per pupil at that point in time was $11,935. And you can see how it's broken down. A majority is in instruction and then fixed charges and then the next piece is special education. And where are we today per pupil spending? You just saw it. Seven thousand. Seven thousand. Thirteen. Seven thousand. How much? It's thirteen. It's seven from the county, right. but when you add the state oh, and the federal, gotcha. yeah, oh, right, right. So, okay. so what is it now? Yes. Thirteen. Yes. yes. Like 13. And we're seventeenth on the list <laughs> out of twenty-four in the state currently. Yes. In the state. 
Back in 19, in um, 2014, we were last. We were 24th mm -hmm. out of 24. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Yeah, this, this, this is what I wanted this to This is a comparison. Um, the yellow line on this chart shows what the state average is spending mm -hmm. per pupil. Mm -hmm. The red line shows where Queen Anne's County is. And you can see back in 2000 or 1992, um, we were very close to what the state average was. We were like 97% of what the state average was. And over time, we have lost, we, you know, that gap is, is getting farther and farther. The next one is, is rank and state. And this is another one that I think is very significant. Um, the Office of Legislative, or Legislative Services does a comparison each year and calculates out what the wealth, per, the wealth per pupil is for each of the counties in the state. And again, I've only gone through 2014 because that was what was in the, the last fact book. But the county has been consistently, you know, they were eighth in the state, and then they were seventh. They went all the way up as, as being sixth wealthiest in the entire state um, and down to seventh. And I think they're either at seventh or eighth currently. But you can see where our per pupil expenditure has been <clears throat> over that same period of time. We used to be 11th or 12th in the state in what we spent in per, per pupil. And over time, we've gone down, and we've been as, as far down as the very lowest in the state. Now, I think we have over the last couple of years, and they haven't produced the data yet, but I think we're back up to like 21st, 22nd in the state. That's but, nothing to brag about. <clears throat> no, but that's, that's better than being 24th. Yeah, I thought in, 16, <laughs> in 16, we were 17th, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Robin, could you if, that didn't if come you remember, the there's always a counter argument that there are budget people that the county use yes. to to but rebut this, you know, so not this figure here, but the philosophy of they give as much per percentage of Yes, and actually um in the folder that we sent you, there's a document in there called the overview of county governments. <laughs> If you go to chapter seven of that document, and I want to say it's about page 100 of the document, but in chapter seven of that document, it gives you a lot of information about the county, the county governments across the state and the breakdown of, you know, how much federal funding do they get, how much state funding, how much local funding. And that is one of the arguments that they always use with us, and that's why I provided you with that document. Because if you look at the local funding, it says that Queen Anne's County is about ninth or tenth in the state as far as how much local funding they provide to, to the Board of Education. So that is always their argument that we're doing our part, you know, it's the state and federal piece that you're not getting. Unfortunately, a lot of our state and federal money is based on our number of free and reduced meal children, and we just don't have that many of them, so we're not able to access a lot of those funds. So. Okay. Um, next, we started looking at, at staffing, because since we are 80% between salaries and fixed charges for our employees, um, if we were to have to reduce this budget in any way, you know, or actually where, where are our resources being used? They're being used in staffing. So what we did is we did a comparison of actual classroom teachers, school by school, um, to see where we were as far as student to pupil ratio. <clears throat> and you can see we go anywhere from Canard here, which is almost 25 um, students per, <clears throat> per teacher, down to Southersville Elementary School, which has about 16 students per, per teacher. And that is on purpose. I mean, if you look at our test scores, um, you know, that you can see that that's where our greatest need is, and that's why we've put our resources at that location. But we are looking at all of those and determining whether some of that can be, we can, you know, um, 
level, change. Le level, level it out some. Yeah. So, you know, we look at the <clears throat> teacher to student ratio, but we consider other factors is what, you know, is being said. So we consider um, the academic challenges that the group of students might have at that particular school and uh, keeping class sizes smaller in schools with students who are academically challenged, or any research will sh show you that that is the right thing to do. Not that, you know, our desired state would be to have 25, 28 students in a class at any school, um, but students who are not as academically challenged can handle more students in a class. Um, so that's why we wanted to point that out to you. And from my understanding, it is by design that Sudlersville Elementary School has smaller class sizes because those students, by the data, that school represents students with more academic challenges. And so the smaller classes are um, appropriate there. We don't have all the schools on there, do we? we this see? is just elementary. Mm -hmm. This is just oh, the elementary, elementary school. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. And then we do also do the same thing at the middle school level. And they're pretty close. Um, These are averages over all grades in that school? Yes. Okay. yes. And <laughs> one here just so that you know, I pulled the fifth grade out of Sellersville Middle School and put them back on the elementary school page. So okay. <clears throat> we're really trying to compare, you know, apples to apples. And the ninth here. graders at the annex are in the high school level or? In the high school okay. level. Great. Yes. Thanks. For clarifying that. And you look at the high school level, and before, you, before you're shocked, I just want to say now, <laughs> um, remember there's other factors, especially at the high school level, that, that influence these numbers. I mean, if you look at just classroom core content teachers, then it works out to be 30 per class. But we know that, you know, there's a lot of CTE, there's the performing and visual arts, um, there's a lot of different things at the high school level that, that can reduce those class sizes. So, but they're, they're very comparable as to content level, um, what we have at both of the high schools. Then we started looking at paraprofessionals, you know, for student um, support, um, that support student learning. And across the board, you know, trying to determine, okay, how many full-time paras do we have at different schools? And, in addition to just looking at these numbers, you have to, again, look at some of the background information. Okay, well, pre-K, we're required to have paras there, and, you know, which schools do we have, you know, special education programs in, because we do have um, regional programs and so that we don't have them in every school. So when you take those into consideration, um, these, these numbers are very comparable. I see you have anchor points on there. Was anchor points included in your... I mean, how does that fit into like high schools or because so, it can go from middle to high, right? Right, but there I believe currently are just high school students there, and what we if if there's not if there, it's a very minimal. Um, but, I mean, it wasn't listed on our our high school average per pupil because those students still have a home school, so okay. they are still included okay. in their home <coughs> school count. Okay. <clears throat> but this is for paras, so gotcha. staffing is right. different. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then the other instructional salaries, you know, that are included as part of instructional salaries, academic dean, the program manager at, at the, um, at APA, at Anchor Points, instructional spe specialists, we have readings, math, and teacher specialists at our schools, our guidance counselors, um, school counselors, media specialists, speech therapists, behavior specialists. So there's a lot of different people that are in the instructional um, part of our budget. So I don't want you to just think it's, you know, classroom teachers and, and that's it. There's a lot. Um, and then under district leadership and administrative support, of course, we have, you know, the assistant superintendent, we have all the principals, the assistant principals, all the instructional supervisors here at the main, at the main building. So then we start getting into trying to estimate some costs for the future. Um, and you have these documents in the, in the folder that you were given. Um, but essentially, the, a cost of a step for next year is going to be $1.3 million. That's across the board. Every employee that's eligible. Every employee that's that eligible. steps. Yeah. Or steps. And, and to be clear, we've not negotiated anything, but right. we are providing estimates right. in sure. the event. Right. Thank you. 
Um, and in saying that, everybody who is eligible, there's 27% of our employees who will not be eligible for a step. Um, if we did a cross the board 1% increase um, on all of the salary scales, that would be about $630,000. And then what boards in the past have asked for is information regarding those who were not getting a step, what an additional 1% would cost for those, and that would be $175,000. Again, note, 27% would not be receiving any increase if we were to only give step increases across the board. Okay. And we go on to health care. Um, we've received our preliminary estimates for health care increases um, and initially they were talking about almost a 10% increase in our health care. Uh, luckily we have been conservative over the years and we have been able to have some reserves through the health care alliance and if we were to use some of those reserves which would be about a little over a million dollars worth of those reserves we can buy down the increase in our premiums to four and a half percent. Well, where does that bring our reserve? Because we did that last year, right? Right. Um, it, off the top of my head, I don't know. Because that changes anyway, right? Right. It yeah. changes each gotcha. year depending on, you know, what our actual been. claims yes. turn out to gotcha. be. And, gotcha. Um, so if we were to have a four and a half percent increase in our health care, that's going to be a $705,000 <clears> for our active employees and another $150,000 for the retirees that we currently have on the rolls. Okay. Um, bus contracts, at this point I am estimating a 2% increase. Um, I think you remember when we negotiated the last contract, instead of just putting an arbitrary figure in there, we tied the increase in their contract to the CPI, and it's the January CPI, which won't be issued until the middle of February. So I won't know exactly. Um, the November CPI was 1.6%, so that's why I've estimated 2%, and we'll just have to see where it comes in when it actually gets here. So that'll be mid-next month when I actually get those figures. Um, the Midshore Special Education Consortium, this is a consortium that four other counties or three other counties belong to and we purchase a lot of our related services through them. Our PTs, OTs, um, hearing therapists, audiologists, you know, those kinds of things where we can't necessarily afford to have a person on staff but occasionally we need some of those services so we buy those services from the consortium and that's going up. $20,000 for next year. And back to our pie chart where we listed contracts, is that something that would be a part of that piece of the pie? Um, it's actually on the transfer piece of the pie. Okay. Um, because okay. we're transferring, Talbot County is the county that houses. You spend it and then you move it. Well, they're the county yeah. that, that, that houses that group. Okay. So we transfer our money to them and then they physically pay the okay. employees that are part of that consortium. Okay. Okay. And then the last thing I have on here in red and with a big question mark is the new law that just passed the Maryland Healthy Working Families Act, which we have called the sick leave bill. Um, and we still don't know where this is going to come out. I heard there was additional emergency legislation that has been, um, you know, rolled out. We don't know. At this point in time, what we're counting on is as of February 11th, this goes into effect. And every hourly employee that we have on staff, for every 30 hours that they work, they have to get an additional a, a, one hour of sick time. So right now we're trying to figure out what that's going to look like. Um, we have our computer program. We're going back and retrieving data and trying to figure out okay, how many hours do people work. Um, the limit is 40 yeah. hours. So that they can carry 40? That they could up to 40 hours of sick leave gotcha. is what they would be issued gotcha. during the course of a year. So we're looking into this. We're trying to estimate a cost as to what this is going to mean. Do we know if it would be use or lose? If they could carry it over to the next year if they didn't use it this year? 
say they got to 40 hours and didn't use any of it? I'm gonna, we don't know. We don't know that. If the person were to separate from us, is this something that we're obligated to pay out? If they, you know, we don't know what the terms of it are. We know that the governor is forming, you know, um, an office to help employers implement, but there's still a lot as well okay. as a changing landscape of uh, legislation to help us Gotcha. Do we have any idea when we might know? Since we're trying to develop a budget right now, <laughs> uh, we're hoping very soon. Yeah, I mean, I, like I say, we have somebody who's working on it, pulling information out of ADP, um, you know, to get what total costs or total hours worked by hourly employees were last year, right. and then we'll have right. to do that. Just so point. we can estimate. Estimate. Just so we right. can estimate for. A number of purposes. And it is going to include it's substitutes. Though, the substitutes yes. and all hourly employees. January 1st. Yeah. So. Oh, retroactive. Okay, I didn't know that. How many hourly employees do we have? A lot. Uh -huh. um, we have, I'm going to say 70 some five hour paras that work in our special mm -hmm. education department. Just special education. Just special education. And then we have a lot of hourly tutors. Um, especially in the ESOL program, um, hourly reading bus drivers, uh, uh, hourly bus drivers, substitutes, substitute teachers. That's that's a big that's one. That's the big one. Huge, mm -hmm. so. huge. Well, they've been talking. There's a lot of we discussed this a little bit in my legislative meeting. A lot of discussion on um, how to, I just say about how to manipulate that if that comes in with substitutes. Watching uh, it doesn't matter. But um, watching the numbers and watching the hours they have coming up, and I mean, essentially you just wouldn't make them do 30 hours over the year, except for maybe your long-term subs. Or let them. So, yeah, right. You just wouldn't contact them once they met their 29. There's been discussions about that by some of the... Well, the hardest part we have is we have a hard time getting, getting them substitutes. substitutes. I know. Right now, so, I do. So we don't want to irritate them. Limiting them in any way <laughs> would right. not probably really. be very beneficial. Exactly. But, the level yeah. of quality. Yeah, there's a lot of issues with that. But there, but some of the counties of are looking at it because they've got lots of subs. In right. Them. right. There's some counties that are talking about, you know, because then you have the issue of trying to track when they're taking the sick leave and at what rate do they get paid. You know, those kinds of things. And so, some counties are just saying, whenever they earn it, we're just going to go ahead and pay it out. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Would it be better at that point maybe to seek a, um, like, a temporary job service? Like, you know, like they used to do with secretaries to get right. temps. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that way it would be your... But your they're work. probably... Even more expensive. I did temp work for five years. You pay two people. From the legislation, right? But the markup on yeah support mm -hmm. service mm -hmm. and the cost you twice. Them provide the same sort of oversight in the hiring process. Mm -hmm. You know, at this point, I don't know if it's something that the superintendent would want to consider. But then we did something similar in my former district, but it wasn't necessarily for substitutes. It was for teachers. But the thing of it is that you have to then pay that vendor. You yeah. got to pay that yeah. vendor for yeah. that service, oh, yeah. then you got to pay the people who you're trying. Oh, yeah. And by the time that's all said and done, cheaper just to pay. I did temp work for years. And, I got and you this don't much, know those and they people got that necessarily. Much. Yes, right. they have not been yeah. screened by you at all. Yeah. You, well, you can implement some right. type of screening as part of, you know, that process. They're, they're they could be coming us. from everywhere, anywhere. Um, and, you know, I know that many of our substitutes are familiar with our schools and they may mm -hmm. live in the community. I mean, I've seen some of many our substitutes working in other places yeah. sure. in the county. Sure. Right. You know. Right. So. Mm. So at this point, that's, that's still a big question as to what that's going to look like. Um, other cost considerations, and basically what I have done is I've, I went through that five-year trend data and just looked at where there are some areas that we might need to think about increasing um, the budget and decreasing. And I didn't really find very many <laughs> areas to decrease. Um, mileage adjustment, about $10,000. Uh, the federal mileage adjustment just went up another penny a mile as of January 1. So that's something we need to look um, at for next year. Legal fees, and that was just based on the five-year trend data um, where we have been 
uh, environmental <coughs> testing, and I'm waiting, this is another one that I'm waiting on a number. There's a new rule, and I <coughs> said, I don't know if you know anything more about sure. it, but basically it's, it's lead testing for water, and there's going to be some new requirements yes. that we have to meet there. The state's not quite sure if they're going to require us to test at one main point where the water comes into the building or if we're going to have to test at every single water fountain. If it is every single water fountain, it's looking about about $10,000, right? <coughs> I mean, if it's just, you know, you want, they want you to do 50%, you're looking at about $5,000. So the most that would probably be on that part is about 10000 But the description is very vague right now of what they have. Um, furniture and equipment. Basically, we have no line item in our budget currently to replace any kind of furniture equipment. Last year, we had to move some money because we needed to buy a classroom and furniture for Stevensville Middle School. We've had to move money on occasion because you know, we needed to replace cafeteria tables or you know those kinds of things. So I think we need to get, at some point in time, we need to put that back in the budget so there is an allocation there that we have some funds that we can tap into um, you know, on a yearly basis in order to do those kinds of things. And it's not just in the, you know, in the classrooms, but in this building, you know, you have chairs break or, you know, those kinds of things that you need to replace. Um, in the custodial area, particularly, we always have floor machines or vacuum cleaners, those kinds of things that, that need to be replaced. And the same thing in maintenance. So we need to look at all of those. What have we been funding that out of till now? Um, we've because been, we've been we've, doing it. I mean, not at a great extent, right? But we've obviously been replacing our broken vacuum cleaners. So where do we get that money? We, we steal it out of custodial <laughs> supplies, which is another area that we really need to look. Oh, we yeah. allocated for those though. Yeah. Management yeah. I mean, well, not everybody has what they yeah. need. I can say that. I mean, it's just what's happened. You know, we've, over the years we've cut, 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 and then you know, based upon the money we were allocated. So if we would get like a fund balance like you're talking about and I would purchase some vacuums, you know, it, yeah, that way. But that's a one time, you know, cost. We're we're looking to really get back into the cycle of replacing it. You know, budget you know, item every you year. You have to have the HEPA filters, it has to be, you know, American Lung Association approved, all those things. I mean it's it, they're not cheap. And, right. and and the budget should be established so that you can, I mean, these are ongoing costs of doing right. business. No school district no, doesn't buy furniture. <laughs> no school district doesn't have to replace, replace desks. floor equipment, cleaning equipment, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be on a, a hope and a prayer from <laughs> attrition money. Yeah. This is the cost right. of doing business. Exactly. Right. Well, they, they have been traditionally over the years, starting with a four and a half million cut, the low hanging fruit, basically, and then they uh -huh. got rid of all of that. We got rid of all of that. We have custodians that we pay a minuscule amount of money using floor mops yeah. versus right. machines to clean good. floors. I'm just telling you what happened to it. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. It is. I agree. It is. Paper. <laughs> Cut out paper for years. I hear me. Okay. Um, the next thing on there is retirement agency fee. And I'm waiting, I talked to the guy this morning and we should have figures hopefully by the end of the month as to what the retirement numbers are gonna be looking at, um, looking like for next year. But I know that they were saying that that agency fee that we have to pay on a per um, employee basis was going to increase. Um, Non-public placement tuitions, again, this is one we can, we look at, we determine whether we think the students that are currently in non-public placements are going to stay there, and if we have any inkling that we're going to have additional students. But um, as this year, we were way over the allocation for that, so we need to add money into that. What, can I ask you, what does the retirement agency do? Um, I forgot that one. The retirement agency? What do they do for us? Uh, we all belong. <clears throat> To the retirement, all of the employees belong to the <coughs> Maryland State Retirement Agency. Um, and a couple years, I think it was maybe five years ago, um, they started charging anybody who was a participant in the retirement agency a fee on a per pupil basis to fund the administration of that. Okay. Of that okay. Well, in other words, the actuarial value of <laughs> our employees participating in the state retirement fund. Well, there's two pieces. There's two things that we pay. We pay the actual contributions for empl on, right. on employee salary, which is what you're talking about. 
the actuarial value, but there's also an administrative overhead fee that we have to pay on a per pupil basis. We know what that would be for the year. Per pupil. We don't. I, I'm sorry. Per okay. employee yeah, basis. Okay. I don't. That's what that's what we're waiting on. Supposed to have that. Budget. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> Maintenance contracts. This is. We looked at it last year, and again, I'm going to refer to sit on sure. this. Last year, we had we had to change the type of floor finishing that we're using on gym floors. Basically, the the government saying, hey. Yeah, the oil base that you're using, you're going to have to wean off of um, because of the VOCs that come off of it. And to go to the water-based um, floor finish, it, it's double the cost. I mean, it's environmentally friendly and friendly to the students and staff, but there is a cost associated with it. So instead of biting that off at one time, just would kind of like to do it year by year until we get them all, you know, switched over with that. And then repairs to building, and this is just based on what we have been doing, our five-year trend data, what we've been spending on repairing our buildings. Luckily, we have more, um, not more, but we have more skilled people on staff, so we're able to do a lot of things in-house, so we need supplies for them to do that, um, and that's what that is. And then custodial supplies, and this ties right into what he was just talking about with the floor finishing. You know, we have to wean off of products that we've used for years and start using green products, and the green products are just more expensive. So, and then the last thing there is hourly wage adjustments. <clears throat> and I'm going to refer to um, Mr. Farley again on this, but we all know that the, that the, um, the minimum wage has continued to increase. And as that has happened, we have done nothing over the years to increase any of our hourly wages to our um, mm -hmm. hourly assistants, substitutes, Subs. tutors, any of those um. home hospital teachers, nobody has received any kind of, of wage increase. Um, but as, but the since when? Like I know it's been a long time since at ever. Least 10 years. I at least ten probably years. Probably at least okay, 10 that's a key point. Yeah. So as of July first, the minimum wage <clears throat> will go up to ten dollars per hour. Um, PFY is the only one who's currently below $10 an hour. But the problem is we're competing with um, Walmart, whose entry-level wage will be $11 an hour. You know, um, other fast food restaurants, well above $10 an hour. We're trusting these folks to our kids. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and we really need to um, start it. moving toward a, a market-based wage. And um, Dr. Kane is taking, you know, taking the lead in addressing those issues. but. For the good of everyone, we need to at least be looking at these wage rates and factoring it into for the larger whole of compensation. We just haven't done anything. That's why we have a shortage of substitutes and well, custodians. There are a lot of reasons and for that. Lots of paras mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that big sure. tax cut money that businesses are getting. So we can't hand everybody thousand dollars. They're not for negotiated, $10 an hour. but they're right. important. Ten dollars an hour. They help our kids and they help us quarter. succeed. Yeah. Right. It's so it. much. It's so frustrating because the commissioners are constantly saying, "Let's bring jobs to our county, jobs to our county." Well, we, we're the largest yes. employer. We have jobs. We need to make them more attractive. Absolutely. So here. Yeah. 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 We were paying people below the poverty. Yeah. Right. Yep. And you're right. We are trusting these people around our children. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so we should not have employees that can't eat and pay rent. In That's exactly. Right. Or have two jobs. Living at the yeah. poverty level. Be on food stamps. Yes, yeah. and, and so the they're using... Kids used to be um, on food stamps, and then they built up the wages after that. So taxpayers are subsidizing in that way. Right. Absolutely. Um, the next thing we want to talk about is requests for new positions. Um, each fall we send something out to all of the schools and we ask them to um, submit budgets into the central office. <clears throat> this past year, which was actually fewer than normal, they requested 35 additional staff through across the 15 um, buildings. Right now, we have included 12. And you can see um, one of the things that was a request at a lot of the elementary schools was to change their teacher specialist to an assistant principal. Um, and essentially that would allow the assistant principal more administrative type duties than what they're currently able to perform. So, so what's happening is that 
person that sits in that position for a teacher specialist only at elementary school is really being used as an assistant principal. So that person is assisting the principal when the principal is out of the building. That person is assisting the principal with administrative duties. Um, because remember, at elementary, they're also a reading and a math specialist. So those reading and math specialists spend the majority of their time out in classrooms and supporting students and teachers, while that teacher specialist spends a good amount of time doing administrative things. So the thought was, make the position what it really is, um, we are one of a very few uh, um, districts in the state that does not have assistant principals at the elementary school level and let them do what they really need to be doing, supporting administrative things and, um, and go ahead and let the math and reading specialists continue to do what they're doing, a distinction of duties. And it also helps to build our bench. So we run short on um, administrators for the principal level and we seem to be advertising again and again and we're trying to create a pool the pool is thin so heaven forbid we have a situation where lots of folks leave the district or have other opportunities because we will not be able to fill the position with our sitting uh, staff so it's an opportunity to train develop a career pathway and really to fill a need because they're doing administrative work anyway can we give I know this can't, comes up every year. Did we give the assistant principal to at least one of the elementary schools last year? Was it Bayside? Um, we had, we did have an assistant principal at one elementary school when Mr. Dunn was doing the campus school, yeah. and he was doing both. Mm -hmm. Then there was one assistant principal assigned to him. That was the only. Right. And when we broke that back into two separate buildings, we got rid of that assistant principal okay. position. Can you explain that multimedia? Specialist reorganization? Oh, yeah, thank you for that. So as we started having this conversation at the beginning of the school year about reorganizing the public information office, and what we are finding is that we do need a person to oversee that office. What the thought process was is to have the person who's going to oversee uh, the public information office to also oversee partnerships because as we continue to build our partnerships and I'm grateful that we are um, and organize that there needs to be a person that is responsible for ensuring you know certain things are happening with that and so the idea was to have one person to oversee whether it's a director like the other offices or, or whatever and then have one person who is the communication specialist who does work on all of the public release tasks who organizes the events that happen um, in that office that support superintendent and the rest of the district. And then there's the need for someone to sort of work the technology, someone to make sure that the recordings happen at the board meeting, someone to make sure that, you know, they're out in schools and doing whatever AV type of multimedia work that goes on out in our schools. Um, so, and, and in addition to website work and, and all of those kinds of things. So that office really needs three people. Um, and so that multimedia specialist would be that person who is working um, behind the camera, behind the computer, and those kinds of things. Why don't Producing we have a price against uh, up, up there then? Everything else has a has a price tag, but that doesn't have a price tag. And, and I don't, we didn't put that because yeah, there. because we, we, we we've created yeah we created the job description but we had to do our research to see where they are across the district I mean across the state so we've got some figures so we'll make sure that we put that in there so for it's you. a director uh, IT person so to speak correct and an organizer of events da -da 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 -da, information out to the public la 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 what do we not have right now in that category? We don't have a director, and really all we have is a person doing the IT and the public release information. So, so we have two people. We have two people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, have yeah. a communication specialist, and we have the public information officer. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Can I ask what the difference would be? What changing a program manager to a principal at the APA, what is, is there going to be $17,000 more of, like what would be the difference? Why, why change that title? 
Um, that was, this is also one of the requests that we received, and that is because the work that that person um, does or that, that description for that job in that case really is like a principal. But isn't the person that's out there already a principal? Well, Just last the title? Year, but Maybe yeah, but last right? year um, a decision was made to um, call that position program manager. Oh, I don't remember that. So they lost pay. They held them steady. Right. Cur currently, why that they? position is budgeted as an assistant principal. Oh, okay. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. But after one so, year, it but goes back. Looking to at what the person does, they're really. So, are we now going to go from 14 schools to 15 schools? No. How can we not say that when you I have? I swear to. we have. When you have, have a, when so you have a nurse part, out so there part, and teachers and principals, I mean that's another there's, school. There's not a there's not and a nurse out there. there. We would like to. It's up there. We would we would like to, but it would also be shared. But with the th the thinking it's is, school, and we haven't had a chance to talk up talk this through. As we recall, we've been working with, um, or we've been doing our research on some online work, and some of that would bring students not only online but evening, right? And so some of that would bring way a lot more students into that facility. So students who would normally need, say, evening school or twilight school, and we could have it there. If they would need to access online schooling because there was not a teacher available, I a understand certified that. I, teacher. I understand what you're saying, but how can you then not qualify that as, as the 15th school? Because you have, you have to have their requirements to be called a school. And so if you have a school, you have to have certain things in order. They have to test out of that school. That school is assigned by the state a school identification number. Um, there's allocations that have to be um, sent to that. Yeah, testing scores go to that. So it's not a decision. They test out of APA, so they're there. Once they're there, they're forever. Their they scores go to their home school. This is, yeah, I don't, I'm not real happy with so how when they, their school is, so scores when, go to their home school because that's not bringing, a school. Why are we bringing them here, bringing the children from the, Queen, or from the two high schools to get their credits to, I was always under the understanding, and if I read correctly in all this paperwork that I have sitting here, is that the APA is for, um, let me see here. We get grants for behavior. Um, summer school. Uh, everything that I see is behavior. And I'm not sure, I have never ever, and I have asked before, been told why we are bringing kids out of our high schools to here to receive, to get their credits to graduate from high school because those students are having major challenges in a traditional setting so APA is an alternative setting oh, to I provide understand instruction that. I so understand that's why that. it has in the in this district funds the teachers they are Queen Anne's County Public Schools teachers right. and, and all of that, right. but there are some additional requirements that those children need. Some of those requirements have to do with the behavior issues that some of them come with. Some of those requirements have to do with drug um, intervention that's necessary. And so there are sort of wraparound services that this district has been able to fund via grants, and that's what you're talking about, to support those students. Since we are funding those teachers, and thankfully, you know, have partners that help us get those grants that we need to support those students. The thinking is there are other students who would fare well in a non-traditional setting such as that, and we can um, capitalize on providing something for those students and earn revenue for the district. So I I'm like, Jen, last year why don't we just leave it the way it is and not need a principal for an additional right. $17,000? If we're going to go to the principal end, why aren't we working to make it a school? I don't know that we would want to make it a school. 
because you, you, right, <laughs> you, you get, there are a lot of things that you want to consider. And what you're going to end up with, remember, most of the students that go to APA are experiencing challenges. Some of their challenges have to do with academics. Some of their challenges have to do with behavior. Some of them have to do with attendance. And when you put all of that in one location and call it a school, you're going to find yourself with a school that is going failing. to be identified as failing. failing. I, I agree. But the point is that each one of those students has a need, and a need that is not currently being met at their traditional high school. Correct. So, some of those students need longer than other students to, to um, you know, to do well or to graduate, because that's the bottom line. We want students to graduate out of there. Um, and some of them, you know, are, are quicker about, you know, jumping on board with the program, understanding what's expected of them, and complying with it. Point being is every single one of them has a need. Every single one of them uh, has a need that is not currently being met at the school setting. And every child does not do well in a traditional setting. Gotcha. Have we ever had a principal at Anchor Point? I don't, I don't no. think so. No. no. I I think here's, 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 the a, here's the thing that. that you need to consider. These are requests. Right. We're going to share right. with you. Right. We're going to share with right. you the rationale for the request. Right. You decide if you have the will, the stomach for funding right. that request or gotcha. requesting funding. You I, know, that's for why that. I, I had asked about getting the enrollment from month to month from last year. Mm -hmm. I know at certain parts of the year, probably towards the end when we're recapturing credits, there's more kids out there. Right. But I really would like to see what the cost effectiveness is for how many students we have out there per cost to run APA on a monthly basis. And, and see then if, then, then I can maybe justify, justify some one of or these the other, other things. So right. I think I, I, you're Ms. Not, DiMaggio you're, yeah, also asked for the operating numbers. I got it. Okay. And it's, it's in that, we have that in that in folder? Your, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find it, but Robin found okay. it for me this morning. Okay. So. But, um, um, because I'm not saying we should or shouldn't even eliminate that location, but we had talked about looking at alternatives. So I mean, we have I, to we have to be able to tell our tax base right. and justify the cost of having that. And right now, I couldn't go out there and justify it because I don't know what the numbers are. No, yeah. you know that's yeah. why I, so I, I need have, those I have numbers. a document that I can share with you. Yeah, absolutely. Right. But what you've got to realize, and part of the issue with getting data for it, and I've got data for you, don't don't mistake this, is that students come and students go. That's why so, I want a month a month to see an average of what's there per month. So I, I can share with you what, we, what we've come up with for you, but students come and students go. When you look at the attendance, what we could come up with the attendance was just students who were currently enrolled in our system, That's not students who were gone. But we still went back a little bit further for you, and we got something that we're able <laughs> to share with you. How about why they are there? Uh, some of this has why they were there. Yeah, they all have why they were we there. We need to it'll know say, why they're there. It'll say whether it was a student services referral or if it was for discipline. Um, um, right. Yeah, so, so you'll have that information. It'll share with you uh, whether the student qualified for free and reduced meals, uh, when they came, when they went, right. if they received special education services, if they received services because they have a 504. All that information will be certainly shared with you. And, um, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll just pop it in your folder. That you and there's have. new transportation on this, um, on this one. To and do to and from the cost of transportation for APA. We can get you a okay. for that. Because there's no cost, sure. cost figure in here. Well, I, I have a, a, had comments from parents about this, and it makes a huge difference. They're they're actually staying in Queen Anne's County because of this these opportunities. These children are are. are I mean, it, it's they're temporary. I have a, a friend of mine whose son went through this. He was going down the wrong path. He went to APA for just a semester, comes back. He's graduated, he's a great member of the community. It, he was not, he, and the one thing was getting him away from the environment of his high school. And that was very helpful, <laughs> and that's just one case. of. And they were thrilled to have this opportunity to put their child somewhere else, even for a short period of time, mm -hmm. to start moving him in the right I direction. I think there's no doubt it's, there's I a agree. need for that I mean, I'm not segment. saying that, but you still have to look, uh, it, when your tax dollars are going to something, you have to justify the cost versus 
what you're providing. And that's all I want to see. I can't make that justification if I don't have that side of it. I see that side of it, yeah, but I want to see the other side. Of sure, it. you want to see the dollars, and, yeah. and certainly we've got that for you. But I do want to say just in general that when we're talking about students that we are trying to save, yeah. right. you're not going to see a cost saving. It costs money right. to sure. educate this group of children. Right. But we're talking about a budget right now, which Absolutely. is dollars. So that's Absolutely. why i got to see that. Stuff. But we can't separate the person from the dollars and the resources that have to be spent. Sure. Right. So, yep, I'm going to save this for you or share this with you. Right now. Can you explain the, the nursing issue? Or, or, or we have some stats where it's necessary to have a nurse there. We have no nurse in this building. Is that right? Okay. So there's no, nothing. There's, we there's no nurse in that building. Which and that, and that, that does that say nurse. AP, AP one nurse for APA. APA. Yeah, it, APA. APA. it doesn't say any place else. So is a not shared, It is a shared nurse, then. So it's not what it says we, up there. Right. Did we have uh, a request? I can't recall from a school for additional nursing. Yes, we did. Kent Island Kent Elementary, Elementary School, school requested. We're going to share a nurse. nurse from here to Kent Island. And I'm not saying that that yeah. is is what would happen yeah. particularly, but if nurses had to be shared, they don't around. have a nurse at Kent Island Elementary School now. They do. They do. But they have. They also have the um, self-contained special education early elementary class there. And there are a number of children there that either have a feeding tube mm -hmm. or need mm -hmm. to be cathetized. Well, I, and I understand that. Yeah. That kind of thing. Right. So, I understand so that. So yep. they, they're requesting some right. additional nursing help. Okay. I just have a problem yeah. putting a full-time nurse out to APA. So how do we handle APA in a nursing emergency now? Who comes in there? Who would we call over there? So sometimes they're, they're able to get nurses, somebody. Right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, they are, but we've got an idea about that. But sometimes they come over from um, Margaret Kaufman, and um, I'm sorry, from the health department, health department. Oh, and Centerville oh. Elementary School. Yeah, I was going to say Centerville's right across the mm -hmm. road. So okay, it's part of the confusion, Dr. Kane, is in the past mm -hmm. the principals have asked for a whole bunch of it's positions, yeah, yeah. and then the superintendent narrowed it down. Exactly. And then to put this slide up is usually what the superintendent wants us to do. Uh-huh. So, okay. So that's what I say. I can provide for you the rationale okay. for I this, make sure and you this decide what your will is. This exactly. isn't everything. Oh, no. And our request is 35, 35 positions okay. request. Our, right, our request this year was 35. Last year they asked for 50. So these are yes. your priorities yes. That's in your mind. These are the ones that stand out as priorities among the ones that principals asked for. Okay. So this is to be considered. Mm -hmm. okay. These are these, these are, are just requests. Yes. <laughs> these aren't so, okay. so, right. There's but we're just right. saying that it's not all of the requests. Right. 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 Uh, let's see. So let's go back up the list here a little bit. Additional teaching staff, um, we're asking for six positions, and you can see there where they are. One at Canard, one at Canard. I can't see it. I can't see it. I can't see it. Can't see that. <laughs> you know small. I can't I'm see it. Kind of, uh, impressed can. can you go over those positions? Why, like, Canard is because of class size? I mean, class size. they have the highest class size. Right. I mean, yeah, right. Right. And and is that um, still an issue? Fourth or fifth grade, it yes, is they issue. will have 25 students. Didn't in we class. give one last year to Kinnard? Because matters. of the same problem. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I think we asked for one, but I think yeah. when the budget finally got settled, no, they no, did not get an additional position. No, Bayside got an additional position last year for fifth grade because of class size. But Kinnard, I do not believe they got an additional position. Well, we only asked for four and a half additional English, positions last right. year, yeah, and, and we didn't get right. funded any. Yeah. Right. right, but I don't remember what right. I, Greg pulled out. Well, I think what we ultimately ended up doing with Bayside was we had a position at Centerville Elementary School, second grade position, that we didn't fill, and we moved that position to okay. Bayside. Okay. So you didn't, uh, other than that, you didn't backfill any of the other four that we're mm -mm. in the budget mm -mm. that we didn't get money for. Okay. Mm -mm. <laughs> so it was on the list that we just teaching didn't. staff, but by one or two. What's that? We increased our teaching staff Last with year. our budget no. as it was. Actually, by none. By none. Maybe not because we moved. Right. We okay. moved the position from this okay. building to that building. So overall. I just I think not. that is absolutely unbelievable that we are even able to, hopefully, only one year. Survive on our current staff 
considering everything that changes and comes down the pike onto them as new responsibilities. And they do well, they do exceptionally well, but I don't know very many businesses <coughs> that don't hire at least a position a year. Well, I know definitely. I mean, Centerville Middle School, what I know this firsthand because their te math specialist teaches my daughter's advanced math class. So I know they've been dying for a math teacher for the last couple years. Right. Um, and they're actually using one of their special education teachers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a math teacher yeah. now. And they really need that position back in special education. Sure. So that's why they're requesting. It's there definitely is a, a need request that for all those I can see. Yeah. yeah. Um, Robin, like how that? many assistant principals are at each school at each high school now? Isn't it two? We have two at each high school. Do you want to move it to three? We want to move it to three. Now, Ken Island, part of the problem there is one of the two is assigned to the annex. Right. So there's really right. only one assistant principal right. and the principal on site. who are currently on site right. at I the remember building. that last year, talking right. about that last year. Yeah, and we actually, we, we were going to rearrange how they were going to do the right. annex last year, and we actually cut that position from the budget. Okay, okay. And Mr. Schreckengloss has come back and said, that's the one position mm -hmm. I really need. Okay. Yeah. Priority so then they would have one two, one at the annex, two at the main Building. campus. Right. So and then, why at Queen Anne's County High School do we need an extra one? Well, when would we be moving? Is, is that annex there forever? I mean, ninth grade is going to be there forever. Is that pretty much what we're saying? <laughs> Probably, yes. Probably. Okay, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Just, give study, an honest, just give me an honest you know, answer. Okay, pen, then that would make sense. That would make Ken sense Island to put would one need there, But I'm not sure why Queen Anne's County High School needs another one. Any that, reason? That was a request from the principal. Just yeah, based and, on just another yeah and, it, and it is yeah. based on um, the challenges that they are having with um, the students there. What are the, can you read those out? Do we have your, I don't have your... I'm reading it. No, I will send it. The individual schools? You send it to that. One at Kennard Elementary School. Okay. One at Ken Island Elementary School. One at Stevensville Middle School, which would be an English language arts. One at Centerville Middle School, which would be a math teacher. One at Queen Anne County High School, which would be computer science. And then one at Queen Anne County High School, which would be split between English language arts and social studies. So those would be the six positions. So what is the justification for those? Um, so that is based on enrollment, except for the computer science teacher, which they have been evidently requesting yes. requesting, and for we've not been years. able yeah. to yeah. Parents right fund. And yeah, parents are so quite upset that we still don't, because we offer. At Ken Island. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, at Ken Island, but we don't yeah, over at Queen Anne's. Anne's. And so they've asked for, um, based on enrollment and students that need to take the <coughs> courses for ELA and social studies, now whether, and it's 0.5 and 0.5, so you see it as 1.0, whether or not we'd be able to find one teacher that has certification in both areas is a challenge, but it really is 0.5 and 0.5. Um, uh, Stevensville, uh, well, let me go backward just a little bit. So the next one will be uh, Centerville Middle School. That was a vacancy that existed already, and what he did was he plugged a special educator into that position, but that special educator needs to do special education, so we still have the need for a math teacher there. At Stevensville Middle School, that is, a, that is an actual need for an ELA teacher based on enrollment. Um, Kent Island, that's another one based on enrollment, and uh, Kennard is the same thing. What grade were those elementary? It didn't really matter they moved. What's your question? I'm Elementary sorry. schools it doesn't matter. They're so it's a flexible grade. Was, well, <laughs> sometimes the grade level has way more, and so you know coming in, and you probably can absorb that for a year. But after a minute, you're going to have to go ahead and add another teacher, or else you're going to end up with 28, 29 kids in a class. The, the uh, Centerville Middle, when you spoke about that, you said that they have a position there. It's just not filled. Correct. So, it was a, but is it funded if it's, we bought it before? So what ended up happening was there was a need for a math teacher. They were not finding a math teacher, so they had a special educator that could also teach math. And so they took that person from special education to fill the math position. That need is still there for special education, and that teacher needs to go back and teach special education, and we need to fill a position for math at that That's school. My question is, we have a position there, so we evidently were funded that position at one point. 
Well, we also have a teacher. You had a math specialist is also teaching a math class at Centerville Middle. So you, you had you had a need that wasn't filled, so the position was there. So it went away. But he filled it in with a person that was not part of the classroom teacher staff, but a special educator. Okay, I'm saying yeah. you know, what I was wondering is the position is there. So evidently, years ago, the position came in with funding attached to it. Yeah. So why do we want to ask to fund the position again, no matter who's in it? He, something must have happened. I don't know if somewhere down the line they switched somebody out because they certainly last year switched somebody in to that position. Well, they do that things was out there. at Centerville Middle School in pods as well. So each pod has is like self-contained with a teacher in each subject. And I believe that it, it's almost been three years, I, I think, that, that that math position hasn't been... To, to, to make equal pods in every grade for that for that grade <coughs> that that position was never was never filled it was always filled with the sub uh, the special ed teacher or the math specialist teaching that class that's how it explained to me as a parent whose children go there right the that position, position was, was never fit was never the position was paid. never Right. Was so never salary funded, was never, never put out for right. it. That's right. right. So don't call it. There's the, a position. The, the need, there, the need like. was there. They pulled somebody from another position. Right. We need a so math teacher a they need to teach a that math class. teacher. It is a position, a position with a dollar amount. I would say we need a position. That's yeah. what it says. It's, that's what it says. That's, 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 that's what it says. Okay, but the FTE. way it's described sounds like the position exists, and you just were filling it with a variety of people. Well, there's. A, I mean, every grade has to have math. No, no, all right. I'm saying is the we, position. Yeah. Okay, she's got it. The well, you position can look at it in the way, because a special funded. ed position isn't built. Awesome. So yeah. two jobs, only one person being paid one salary and yes. one job and amount. One, fund one job, funded one amount. Fund funded right. Funded. Okay. right, thank you. Now, right. um, <clears throat> so I can sort of discern here where these requests came from principals, mm -hmm. teacher specialists and assistant principals. Those were principal requests yeah. Yes. when we sent out their dream sheet, so to speak. Additional teaching staff, that's principal request. Yes. Assistant principals, that's principal request yes. for additional staffing. Nursing staff, that was a principal request. Right. Maintenance staff probably came out of the maintenance right. department. Mr. Pender. Driver trainer probably came out of transportation. Well, it right. does say that. Program manager to the principal, that's a principal request. Right. And then multimedia specialist, and that's a central office. a central office request. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, any other questions on on these? Yeah. <clears throat> There's just no dollar amount for the multimedia specialist. That was the same to right. Time I used. Right, we, we at, at we'll the time that we put this together, we hadn't done okay. a, um, no. a, a determine what that salary would be. That's been determined today. You said at the time this was put together. No, we're we're looking at what the uh, rate, the going rate is across the state. So we can, we can have something in there for you by tomorrow. And and right now, it does exist, but it's a contract, or an hourly rate, or which for the director. Director of what? Do you specialist? Doctor Kane said we have a director and we have the um, communication specialist. Communication specialist, right? And so, we'll be so adding this a third specialist position. would be a new position. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But we never had a director before, yeah. well, so that should be up there too. But, but someone's filling. But someone it. is in that position as an hourly employee, no. or under a contract. Yeah. No, that that is a, a management position. That's already been funded. Mm -hmm. See, I thought we were told that that was right now a contract. No, that's changed. Uh, no, Geneva. no, the communication Geneva. specialist Geneva. position right. was no, the director. Was the director there. position. We don't have that. We, well, I just the asked position, that. Right. The position that. is not a director. <laughs> I believe, what is it now, a coordinator? Mm -hmm. Coordinator of Public that. Information? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The PIO. Coordinator, coordinator of Public Information. Thank you. It is a coordinator position. And that we don't have right now as a paid salary. It's a hourly rate. No, no it is, it is a paid salary. salary. The communication specialist currently we're paying as an hourly rate. Pardon me. I'm sorry. Communication specialists were currently paying as an hourly rate because it's under that contract, person, right? right that person, because we couldn't right, fill the position permanently. Resigned earlier this year, right. and then we That's just hired an hourly person. Right. 
the left. Yeah, that's the position. For the position. remainder of the year. Which position number? is Jeff's position? Coordinator of Public Information. Coordinator of Public Information. Oh, okay. I oh, yeah, those mixed it. Sorry. Okay. Yes. We have all that clear? Okay. So then the next thing we have is new requests for programs. And you just had a presentation at the last board meeting about the early college yes, that was um, academy good. and dual enrollment. Well, my understanding is that we have 90 students at Queen Anne's County High School that are interested in this. Well, we need to come up with a cost as to what, how this is going to look. You know, I was going to ask, it get, I don't mean to throw anybody off, but I know that this happened to me last year. My son signed up for two college courses, and I, I guess I must live in no man's land or something. I thought that that was paid for by Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Thanks. The classes were, or even maybe not paid for, but there was um, a, a different rate. Yes. Or something. Yes. If they, if they're enrolled in dual en enrollment, okay. Then the then the um, community colleges give them a reduced rate. Okay. As it, far as what okay. they're paid. Then on top of that, um, if they are a, if they qualify for free and reduced yeah. meals, then the board of education has to pay for those classes. We also have to. There okay. was a um, see. I don't bill think a couple years ago. I don't think our parents know that. Know that right. Because we well, have I children. Some of them do. <laughs> well, maybe some of them. Yeah, yeah, and you're right. You're yeah. right. But I, I know the some parents. Was, I didn't sure. know that. Uh -huh. And I know parent. I know some kids that really would have liked to have last year and this year being dual enrolled, right. or in that circumstance, and they had no idea that that we would pay for that. So that's part of our issue with making sure that everybody has access, so they have right. to have information for right. it. But that also, uh, remember, is the transportation, or it has been in the past, right. Right. a transportation issue. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Now, for all other students who are duly enrolled, we have to pay 10% of the cost of their um, Okay. Okay. 10% of their tuition. Yeah. And that was a, a bill that passed through the legislature right. three or four years ago. Right. We right. had to start doing that. Okay. Is it some of the work that PIO's group would be doing? Is making sure parents understood these kinds of things? Oh no, this is academics. That's that's CNI. That's CNI. Yeah. That's not PIO. No, but it's it's a guidance counselor. Oh, okay. Um, they're they're starting so to no. really get the word out. I okay. think, To, right. to the you. parents, and let them understand that. Okay. Um, virtual academy. This is something we've been talking about that kids would be able to go on. Mm -hmm. and this was part of the uh, print having the principal at the APA that they would be overseeing this virtual academy where kids would be able to take classes online. And then And so but just worth mentioning also is that with this virtual academy we're going to go visit one that they have in Frederick um, but we that is revenue producing. So the intent is to hopefully bring back some families who are homeschooling their students so they are not currently students so we would get um, you know, the allocation for those students. So it is potentially revenue producing. It, just a real quick question on that, and it really isn't budget related, but thinking of, you know, making it equitable for all students, would a student who wanted to take an excess of credits, like like an advanced student that wants to take a class, would yeah. they also be able to qualify for that? Or is this Absolutely. just for kids recapturing or trying to come back? No, it <clears throat> would be for that student who wanted to accelerate as well. Okay. So the the only challenge we would have is, is figuring out the schedule. Okay, that's mm -hmm. all I just wanted to know real quick. I, did. No. I just didn't understand when you said revenue producing, yes. who ultimately pays for for it. Like, where does this money come from? Right. So for students who are not currently <laughs> in our school system, there is a, uh, a, a daily, uh, uh, a per pupil um, cost, right, right, that schools receive mm -hmm. when students are enrolled. Receive we had some from? The state. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and Home part of state. that, and part of that is the state. Part of that is local. We so we just had some conversation about the three different areas where funds come from per pupil. Mm -hmm. So right. part of it is local, part of it is state. Some of it is you know federal, what have you. But when we don't have students attending, we get none of that. But when we have students enrolled, we get funds enrolled for that virtual academy. they would be enrolled in yeah. Queen Anne's yeah. County public schools <laughs> going through, and we, the right, academy. Going through academy. A, per, a virtual academy and, and this is sometimes because they are unable to be in the school setting so in my experience and I just uh, went through this um, in my prior district 
students that are enrolled in uh, virtual schools are a multitude of different reasons. Some of them are ill. Mm -hmm. um, some of them have religious, their families have religious beliefs about the curriculum that's being taught. The family just wants them some, schooled at home. They, right. may work. they don't have Working. an, a, they yeah, don't have an aversion yeah. to them so being enrolled. The they just but don't you're want them in the system. Responsible Physically. for graduating your student yourself. They're graduating from Queen Anne's. Could we get a presentation? I actually have that. clients who um, that would be yeah. solve a yeah. lot of these yep. questions. Yeah. Thank you. But it's it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know in my work, just with um, clients who are experiencing extreme anxiety, they're unable to be in the school system, and this is an opportunity for them and in those situations a lot of times the parent ends up picking up the slack and doing the homeschooling so this is a good way to make and we, and we figure a part as, of the county exactly. not like yeah. somewhat yeah. isolated in this like minor little fantastic. school homeschool yeah I get it. I get it so there are about I believe uh, our last check was about 200 students who are homeschooled right now and even if half of those students came back to Queen Anne's County Public Schools that'd be revenue for us and so part of the funds that we pay would be diminished because we're receiving revenue because right. these students are now enrolled in our school systems right. and we're not even talking about the 60 plus students that we currently have out on home, home hospital, that's what I was going to say, or something like that. Anxiety yes. and we lots get of to count that, that we even though they're being schooled to elsewhere. Yeah. That's we right. Be, we this would school. We still have to pay a home teacher. For yes, that we do. Child. We do, but we right. do get funding for them. Now, if you look at the scheme of things, you get this much funding. You have a classroom student compared to this much funding, and a student who has resources coming to their home, of course, it costs more of that funding dollar amount to get that teacher there than right. in the classroom. Right. But this would open up the homeschool group. A whole new set of children. Which is not the hospital, not home care, reach. health care, mm -hmm. anxiety okay. group, blah, blah, blah. blah. Expensive because they're not there to use the toilet paper. And the, I mean, right. 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 I think it would be cheaper. That student. is correct. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if we're looking at programs that um, will provide everything that the child needs for right. schooling. So the computer, right. the materials of instruction, if they're taking art, art supplies, <laughs> right. if they're taking music, the instrument, you know, whatever. Well, and I guess the end result, will they receive a diploma? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the first question people are going to ask. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Exactly, attend the graduation. There's a sense um, of inclusion in, yeah. without some of the challenges that, may, that student may be facing. That's why I think a presentation on this would answer all of our questions. Yeah, and, you know, and as, soon as, we, as soon as we are you know, prepared, we're mm -hmm. still doing our homework for that. Okay. We'll, we'll definitely. And I think I might have mentioned, mentioned last board meeting that we'd be sharing that with yeah. you. So. Oh, do we have any idea if we were able to achieve this, would the funding per student be the same as it would? In my experience, it's about half. Okay. In my experience, okay. it's, it's about half. But and it's that half was in we another state, getting. so we'd have to. We're, we're doing a part of our work in getting information. Right. It's finding out what that would be, right. and looking at the different models that we could do here in Maryland. Right. So Frederick County has a, a model that's going right now, and uh, so we'll be going up to visit with them in about. But a it's month. still revenue that we don't absolutely realize because now. we do not currently have these students enrolled yep. in our system. Okay, great. Um, school day SAT, and this would just be making the SAT test available to students during the school day, and there is a cost associated with that. And then band uniforms, which is something I know that has come up just recently. Um, last year, we had requested $50,000 as part of our <coughs> capital budget to fund band uniforms, um, and then and it did not get funded by the county. So then when we... Oh, yeah went back and used our fund balance and made a, asked for an allocation of fund balance. Um, we used $30,000 based on the number of that. students that were in the band. The $50,000 was going to buy 100 band uniforms. Um, and there were only like 45 students in the band, so we thought that was excessive. So we cut it back to $30,000, and we've all seen the emails from the band director and the... But shouldn't um, it have been brought back before the board, considering the board, even though it may have not been funded, the board um, approved the $50,000? It did come back to us. That's how we approved the thirty. I don't know. I right didn't now. approve $30,000. I never approved $30,000. I think $30, we did. You may have, but I didn't. Spencer, the fund balance, right? 
when, right. When I did. To, when to, we to took use over, the fund balance. Right. When we took over the letter to allocate the fund, $599,000 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. worth the fund balance. It was in, the it was, no, it was in that letter. Right. That because that gave us, I think, he, I think <laughs> Mr. Paluski even gave us a dollar amount per band uniform that would cover for the current students in the band. So, Mike, okay, this is my question. Is the $30,000 still sitting in the account for the band? Yeah. Then we need to give the band the approval mm -hmm. to go ahead and order his uniforms because he only has until the January 31st is well, what we got I'm reading. Decide. He's saying they're costing so 50 he can pay. No, he can pay half of it this year and he can pay half of it next year. So we'll go ahead and fund the 30 and then we will fund it because the price is getting ready to go up. I hear you. I know. Yeah. I he know. has, he has 30, January 30, 30 kids in the band, 35 kids. No, he has more than no, that. He has, he has more than no, that. Yeah. He yeah. Well, it's more than it was last year right. and he anticipates increase next year. Right. And, and one of the things he uses to entice children to come into the band and secure them, make them feel comfortable is that they're going to have a uniform. Well, exactly. and they need more uniforms they need than more. they do students because right. of size. Right. Right. Exactly. You have to have yeah. a number of sizes to choose we from. Funded, we funded over 50%. If you funded 30,000 of a 50,000 request for 100, we clearly it wasn't funded it. No, it he wasn't requested 100, 100 initially, we and we cut it we back cut it to back. 50. Yes. yes. And yes. he said That's he could correct. do it for 50. And he found a company that could do it for 50. That's why That's we what's getting ready to go up. 50. But 50 was for 100 uniforms. No. No, 50 okay. uniforms. I misunderstood yeah. that. It was for 100. Yeah. yeah. No, 50 was for 100. 100 uniforms. Oh. I thought he oh. was asking 100,000 to pay for the uniforms, and we cut it back to 50,000. No. No, I don't know. 50, and we cut it to 30. I think it was always 50,000. 50, okay. it was 50, 50 for 100. Yeah. And we his, gave him 30. His initial so we gave him request was for $50,000. Okay. Right. right. But you can't buy just for how many kids you have right. in the band at the time. Right. Because not every child wears the same size. Exactly. So we funded 30,000. So we, well, we but actually funded did. 50, but the county yeah. didn't do it. Okay, but so, um, we, so But there's $30,000 in there now. Okay. Yes, that, correct. That was approved. Yes. That is in there. Yes. So my feeling is, is that we need to let him know that he can, because as of January 31st, from his email, that bid is now going to go up. They've only held it until the end of January. As of the end of January, it goes up to two years of new prices. So let's let him know, give him the $30,000 and order your uniforms. And then we'll, whatever the balance is, then we need to put it put into the budget this year. <laughs> Instead of 50000 Can we do that? Can we, we put project 20, 20 in. into a budget next year that we aren't even discussing yet? What would be this budget that we're talking about? No. The money's already done. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. You're right. The You're right. You're right. Done. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, Thank you, Annette. You're right. You're right. I think we ought to look at it and see what it is because if he, he may We've have We've already plenty. looked at it. He may have plenty of uniforms with 30,000. He, he does not. He needs to test it. That's the Did you read the email? email? Yeah. But he that's the whole crux of the matter. He's trying to get 100 uniforms. He may not need 100 uniforms. If you have 50 kids in the band, not every child is going to wear but the you same don't need size two for every kid. I mean, that's my point. I mean, these are going to last. Let's what, just that's that's thing. Thing. And we wouldn't have to buy a new uniform. I missed the years. years. I think it's been how long? 10 years? 15 years. 15 years. And, and, right. and that so can attest. She went and picked the them up. They're full of holes. They're yeah. done. They're, they're, they're nasty. Rags. They're hard. I mean, but have I didn't see really that he was important. asking for 100 years for next year. I don't think it was 100. He specifically gave us the number of His bid is for $50,000. So. He only has 30. So if he says go ahead, if he doesn't go ahead, we don't get uniforms. No, he needs exactly. to go ahead. No one says he shouldn't. But, then, know why but, that, but no one is but giving him permission to do it. Oh, okay. Right. right. That, that's that's what he's asking. Ago. That's what he, absolutely. And that's but what, he couldn't because he needed 50 and we only allocated no, 30. No, he knew, he's known for months no. that he needed half to put down. The company oh, told okay. him, if you pay for half, I mean, the email said it all. But that's not how it was budgeted last year. That 30000 was, was not understood as half. It was budgeted for the whole 50000 Exactly. So exactly. he could pay for the hit, for the whole this amount. This is the first I've heard about the 30 not covering his needs. Okay. This is the well, first I've heard about it. I don't remember, it, but, but, 30, but, but um, just give me okay for the I didn't see yeah, that it was 100. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Well, we already did. Well, we already, we already did, did that. Did. That's we what I'm saying. We already did that. 
We don't this need is, to okay anything. It's the we did additional that much. Yeah, we had to talk about. Problem. Yeah, that's yeah, they, he never he got authorization to order to, to order, to order enough okay. that so costs so fifty. Dr. So we King, need for we someone to give him, him authorization, whether it be you, you or Greg, to let him know <coughs> that he can go ahead and order his uniform so that the price doesn't go up by January 31st, or after January 31st. And we will see to it that we try to get that as a line item in this year's budget, whether it gets funded at the county level or not, I don't right. it will be a request. We would have to. We had to do it last year. We don't need to say the rest of it. We don't need to say the rest of it. Have him order what he needs with the 30. So no, I disagree Ms. with that. Ms. Yeah. Landgraf, he, they currently have 30,000. I know that a member of your staff contacted the school so is there any reason why he wouldn't be able to order using the 30000 that's allocated to him right now? No, there's no reason he can't order right. that many. What he's saying is he can't order enough to have available sizes for mm -hmm. band members that would be coming in the future and that he would basically Next year, he would have to put in another order for more band uniforms. Right. right. Because just going to take a higher And then a different well, color, a different dye lot. So, yeah. yeah. What so, he so wants is us to allocate an, an additional, additional $20,000. $20, so he can right. order so what he, he wants. The, the ones that he needs to order. That he he does. Needs. We don't have $20,000. Well, well it, that's we'll a budget it. item we'll for this year. No, but but we have to put it in the list now. He's yeah, but not talking about four. No, no, no. But what it's he's saying, only due. see, there's already thirty thousand dollars. Okay, there's Correct. already thirty. The company has told him, if you, you know, if half. you put the order with us, right, right mm -hmm. then next year. The twenty thousand. We'll go ahead and get the uniforms because I think it takes like six or seven months to make that many uniforms. Mm -hmm. So what he all he's asking is that that he have his thirty thousand, which we say it's already, already there. Have. Exactly. Place the order. That's and that uniforms. we put twenty thousand in our budget this year so that he can order the enough. Balance. So everyone yeah, he wants to know that we're gonna pay that twenty thousand dollars when that bill come when the bill comes due next year. When so, the when the point. balance comes right, due, right, the balance. So have right. thirty to place the order, right. and we'll owe twenty when it's completed. So he's he's got money for sixty right now. So what what I'm he saying is more. that what you're saying is if he needs the fifty thousand, right, 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 in one order, right, and you are committing twenty, you are committing twenty thousand dollars regardless of approval of the budget is what you're saying because you're saying to him go ahead and order based on a budget that is not yet approved so true you're, you are saying i'm just making you clear about what you're saying you're saying regardless of a budget that is approved or not you are going to ensure that from somewhere you find twenty thousand dollars to give for band uniforms that is what you're saying if you are giving him the okay if he has to have this fifty thousand, I am in one order. He has to have a hundred instead of sixty. Do, do we know what the cost would be if we delayed? Like if we don't let him order in time? Uh, I forgot it. He go just off. said it was going to go up. He didn't just, say. Yeah. You know, I'm just questioning at that point. Yeah. Like, are we talking? They've 000 held 000 the more? bid for two years. Right. And then uh, along come the issues like Sharon had mentioned. Um, Colors not matching. Right, and, exactly. You know, then we got a band looking all sloppy. Exactly. And do we want it? So, uh, yes, <laughs> so last band. year, my, my point is somebody needs to say, <laughs> do 30, what is the average number of kids he has in the band? So can you find out how many kids he has and in do the band? I thought he said more 45. Than, do we need more than 60 uniforms for that number? If we do, you know, then well, I think he it. said so he had was 45. Well, I, I really find it hard to believe that he would be asking for more than enough. he needs. That I he mean, needed. he's very, very conservative, and most teachers are. And I, I right. can't. Yeah, he's going and to he's the been efforts there a of lot doing of this. Years. I mean, and he knows whether those uniforms are good right. or not. Fit. And it's been 15 years. 15 years. Right. Yeah. 15 years. And well, I have to dry say, they do falling look, they, apart. I mean, I've seen them. They do kind of look a little yeah, outdated. They're worn. A lot outdated. Yeah. yeah. I am not so I'm arguing. To, they need uniforms. I'm just saying, We don't what want is to do right half number? and half because they're right. never going to match. Here. I think we need 20. to rely on I want to go back to last year's budget. I'm an expert on what size's band is and it might possibly be. I agree with... Right. Um, in the next 15 years, he may have 100. He may, right. Well, back in the day, they did. Well, I mean, yeah. if you look yeah. at yeah. Seller, the size of Sellersville Middle School Band and the size of Centerville Middle School uh -huh. Band and the number of 8th graders, graders he can project pretty easily uh -huh. out of those How many who are coming 
for those uniforms. I mean, it, it's not a hard projection. Mm -hmm. And although it may be hard to find the, you know, commit the money, are we saving taxpayers money because then it's going to go know, up? The number's going to go up. Right. But we don't have a concrete info on how much that's going to go up. So that's a little makes me a little curious. So, as so to he's what that given is. an estimate. If the limited number of uniforms mm -hmm. were to be purchased now, with an additional allotment being purchased at any time later, we would for, we would force the cost to be at least an additional five to six thousand dollars more than if they were all purchased in one order. Mm -hmm. Can I ask why the county commissioners denied that request? Well, it was a 50? part of our original budget, and they denied the whole remember? budget. It was capital. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was a capital. Uh, it, was, uh, yeah. it was a capital. And then, if you because recall. Because they think yeah. we said on Monday. Wait, that's it. Did you say um, so that's it? You, I'm pretty sure it was in the capital. And then, if it you was. recall, we went back and we asked for the fund balance, which if the commissioners have generally said, hey, you got one a fund time, balance, use it. Well, one time maintenance projects and those things upkeep, and then they got on us for spending it on band uniforms at that time. If you recall that, that's kind of when the whole And this past time, they got on us for not spending it on band, band uniforms. You have that fund balance, use it. Yeah. Yeah. So it was originally well, not in the capital up. part and then came through in the uh, fund balance portion of it. Um, and uh, sorry, Ms. Kelly, it, it, this is for 104 uniforms. So the 50,000 would cover 104 uniforms spread out over two separate payments. Mm -hmm. Two separate years, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. Two budget years. Right. But I thought, too, that <clears throat> we did place a budget item in, in the capital budget prior to budget. anything being approved, that that was one of our items that we were asking for. It was. Yeah. So it, it would was. be the same this year. This is one of our items we're asking for for this budget is the additional 20 just be that will be due. Well, we know that. We know so that. We well, then we'd have to use our fund balance to, to, to cover it. I mean, that's that's what we would be I think forced we with might if we would get the question, it. why did you order them if you didn't have the money? <laughs> Which I think is what Dr. Kane is saying, approving something. But, but we did that last year with these. This came at the last minute last year, if you remember. Kind of as a big surprise. Maybe not to Jen because she has kids. Minute. I think he's he contacted us and it like about this time. No, it wasn't last minute because it was in our it yeah. was in our <laughs> it was in our presentation for uh, FY. You said he had to see, wait. See, where did I write that down at? Oh, is it, February twenty second, we had the recommended yeah. two thousand eighteen budget. Okay. And on page thirteen, there was a construction fund um, slide that that showed that we were requesting fifty thousand dollars for that. Well, that is sort of last minute. I mean, we're in January. February? February, honey, your budget has to be ready March whatever. Yeah, but he had brought it to us before that. But we see, I didn't know that to. because yeah. I wasn't a board member. Right. So maybe right. for me it was last right. minute and it was a big surprise. And, you know, I'm all about die lots and holes. <laughs> and right, yeah. You send our know. kids out there on the field looking like rags. Right. I'd be sitting there well, doing it myself. The uniforms because apparently they're going to Disney World in exactly. March. Exactly. Right. And they're wearing the old Disney uniforms World this year. Like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We also, you so. know, it's an attractive thing for a student to want to think about the band and to, to be a part of that. And that's part of the... I, I think that's been one of the reasons some of his students have dropped out, is the condition of these current uniforms. They're horrible. Oh, it, they're, they're moths. If right? they are not... Moth ridden and threadbare. And Greg went and up and looked at them. I mean, he said yeah. they, they were don't a mess. fit them. Right, right. Okay. Well. So I just want to make sure that I'm clear. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> We've talked all the way around it. Have we right. talked through it? $30,000 <laughs> is currently allocated, and you are committing either asking the county government for an additional $20,000 in next year's budget or having to use your fund balance in order to fund the additional $20,000 okay for that. these bands. I think that's the only way we can do it, because really that's the decision we made yeah. last yep, year. That's where we're we gonna thought be it would be enough. It wasn't unforeseen for us. Mm -hmm. it's a I can't renege on the whole we deal. We can't we renege on the whole deal yes. because the bid came in higher. A, I was going to say, mm -hmm. do we need a vote? That was the other thing he had to do. He had to get three bids. It took a while. Do we need to take a... I think we do need to take a vote to on this. Take a vote. I guess the only reason I wouldn't be voting for it is I, I think 
that 100 is just a big number when you you really only need what well, you said 45 is a high number and I don't know did 60, he say 45 and we're buying 60 I units well, he, I looked at it he but you've only got two choices for minute, one third of your Sid's people in his email he currently has 50 uniform members um, and two drum majors he said uh, what we found is 50 uniform members um, a stock of 70 uniforms is not enough of, to provide an ample selection of sizes to fit all of um, the people uh, that want to participate in a marching band based upon their size of the uniform and size of the person's body. So, so yeah, because other than standing and fitting everybody for a uniform, so seven, there's no other way to do it. He's, he's saying that uh, 70 uniforms that he could buy with the 30,000. Um, yeah, he could, he, buy he could 70 purchase 70 uniforms for the 50 but band members, solution. but what he's saying is that. The size that would not be enough sizes for somebody that's you know the uh, the husky cut like me or the athletic cut. My, my mom. Told me. <laughs> We're the stick child. I'm kidding. Healthy. Or you know, but he's healthy. Buff. You know, but the different sizes. You know, six to you know, I mean, the, <laughs> yeah. the five foot. He's saying that you know he needs a you 30 know spare, thirty spares. 30, thirty more on top of that. So what you will be looking at, if I'm interpreting this correctly, is yeah, you know, 100. fifty students uh, in a hundred band uniforms would be ample enough for. Um, for him. For his needs. You know, the jacket, the plume, the hat, the uh, pants. But plus the idea of how many more band members there may be. It's a great well, program to think about growing. Additional funds in the budget. 2019 budget. 20 for the 2019, 2019 budget. budget. All mm -hmm. right, so I'm going to make a motion <coughs> to allocate $20,000 in the 2019 budget for the Queen Anne's County High School band uniforms. I second that. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. 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 The ayes have it. <coughs> um, discussion? Uh -huh. Oh, so discussion should have come before I'm new to this. S simply because I, I just want to be sure that we don't need to amend that because, yes, and you could put that in the request, the budget without having to take a vote. But your issue was that you were going to use fund, fund balance, balance in, the, in event the event that it was right. not, the budget was not approved. Right. And that was the sticking point. Right. So, is that our only choice for a funding it otherwise is fund balance? No, or we could, could we word it that we would somewhere else. We give, examine yeah. the budget? Given the funding does not get approved, we could examine the budget for other areas that we could draw the 20 from instead I, of sticking ourselves. It doesn't ourselves have to be right. under fund balance. I, I think that that yeah. is more appropriate because you don't Absolutely. know what's going to happen. You don't you know, know that your cat, that where it's going to come from. Fund balance is going to happen. How does this work? How does this work? Do we, when we no, want we the money take from the county commissioners? No, no, We figure out where we have to take it from. Not in your motion. But let's, let's get it clarified that we're going to take it just we don't know where well, it depends on the that, appropriateness that, I think that that's what you her motion was pretty general so you don't have to yeah clarify that I, I'm not but saying I mean, we, money will, have, we would have to re-examine no matter what oh, okay I did okay. she okay. she's making a motion to include it in the FY19 budget right but you don't need to take a vote to include it in oh, the FY19 gotcha. budget the point was if it was coming from if, a certain area if it is not gotcha. funded what are you going to do with it I mean, how are you going to pay for it? That was the point. And while you don't have to be so um, narrow as to say only from right. fund buzz. Right. And I didn't say that. I never no, said that. No, you did not. No, I no. did not. That was no. the discussion, right. but right. that's not what you no, said. No, that's not what I said. Um, no. So we can just make another motion. And if you don't feel like you want to mention how it's going to be covered, then I don't. would. I don't feel we that can, we do need to. But we need to make another motion that we will ensure it is covered. Isn't that? No. I that's what, what she just did. That's, that's what right. I just yeah, did. I by making the motion, I think we're done. And you all, just... you all agreed to it. We got a second. Everybody agreed except for Bev. But that's that was the, what the motion was. That basically but in 2019 budget, we'll find in that 20, budget. It's yeah. included but in that budget. But we didn't say that. So in yes, the event did. it's not funded, she did. I okay. did. What okay. did I say, Jackie? <laughs> Mrs. Demondia moved to allocate twenty thousand dollars in the FY 2019 budget for Queens County High School band uniform. The motion second and the majority and the vote is taken. We'll find it anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We'll it's find done. it anywhere. It's done. We're not stuck with anything. It. Except it. funding it. Okay. We're good. Okay. okay. <coughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Oh, in essence of time here, since we yeah. were only supposed to be here until 2 o'clock, yeah. now quarter after 2, I don't know where you want to go with this. We can talk about some cost considerations. I've still got construction fund that we haven't talked about yet. I don't know if you want to stop here. Um, we'll be back next Wednesday. We'll be back next Wednesday. I think we should consider a good this. stopping point. I need to slide. But then we slide. have to remember that from Just next Wednesday on, to when the superintendent's recommended budget, there's only a week in between there. So. Well, I'm going to make a request. Um, I, I had asked Jen, um, this is all good on the computer. Great. I need paper. Yeah. Okay. I, like I like to make, to make notes on too. it. I have passed. <laughs> My and I know we're trying to cut <laughs> and all that. But I have... From, since I've been on here and I make notes on my book and I can I go too. back and look at them, I can't do that on my phone. I can barely see my phone. That you know. Do you want the PowerPoint so printed? If, if we could just have the PowerPoint. It was printed. on my board. Document. Yeah. Yes. If we could have it all printed like we like we've done in the past. Just a book. Okay. Just a book that. like we've yep. done in the no past. Problem. Okay. It Thank is, you. It is nice to highlight and make notes because then it's easier to go back. It is. Yeah. Then to make notes and look on my computer. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. okay. It's just easier to do it all in one place. Like you said, I'm sitting here taking notes and then I'm thinking, now I gotta we go home and see where I made the notes at. So, you know. Our point. It, okay. it was, I just it's looked at all my phone. It's it was on Board Docs. Yeah. Is it on the. It's public? under the budget. Uh, under it was under the very first under one that budget Robin said. So, okay. Summary. Yeah, I went at it at home. I was looking for. Okay. All right. I, was I mean, I know there wasn't anything attached the other day, but I didn't check okay. since. It's under the one that she sent uh, five days ago. One done With all of the... Mm -hmm. Oh, it's in the email. Oh, I don't okay. see it. Mm -hmm. And, and well, the reason is because the pie charts change. It gets The mm -hmm. words get all jumbled up when we put Yeah, that's why I said it. Just yeah. I need paper. I need to see this on paper. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Robin. No Sorry problem. about that. One more thing for you to have to do. Sorry, Robin. It's okay. <laughs> so, so, so before before we uh, get ready to adjourn, so let's just be prepared. So for next week, we're going to continue. We're going to talk about construction fund and everything right. else that we have here. Um, but I also want to be sure that we're prepared to talk about what we're going to consider um, if we've got to make up, you know, several million dollars, right? right. If we're not funded. Mm -hmm. then we've got some, you Absolutely. know, a few million dollars to make up. Because we don't know what parts. this whole budget number is yet. Yeah. We don't know what Minus this cost maybe one is. area. Or did, know, did, the did we have thing, a slide for this yet? We do. For what just our yeah, well, current request is going to be? In, yeah, we do. Into it. We'll, what will our but current I just request be? Right. I just want to prep you, you know, so that you are prepared to have the conversations about what, you know, well, if we have savings. the paper in the past, what we've done is we've had the, <coughs> the books and we take them home and we study them. A lot of us will make notes of where we think, right. what we would support, what we wouldn't support, and where. And then that it, that gets us to a quicker meeting, so to speak. So when we come mm -hmm. here, yeah. we'll be saying, okay, this is this line we item. Can move I, on. Yeah, we can move on a lot faster. Okay. Because if one of us, if all of us say, "Oh, well, that we we understand that," we can just keep moving instead of Robin having to keep going over each line. If we see that book, we can go through that book. And we could send her it. email questions ahead of time, saying, "Like, yes. can you explain this line item?" And she, in the past, has sent us emails and said, "Well, this is what it is," and then that way it keeps the, mo mm -hmm. the momentum moving, and a little bit. We can get you whatever it is that you need yeah, I think so that, that you it. have yeah. <laughs> to yeah, make a decision. That's, um, so that you're yeah, able to make a decision. So. I want to say thank you, Robin, for meeting with me because I try to get my information with her on private. That way I'm not slowing up our meeting because i got to right. kind of play catch up. So I appreciate your time um, no with the personal meeting, which I want to do again. <laughs> 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 Just so you know. Because <laughs> I know you have a question about what happens, what is the process. Yes. I'm, I'm yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, before we close, we have a future meeting events. We have January 31st, as a, which is next Wednesday, another budget work session at 11 to 2, correct? Um, and on February 7th, we have the superintendent's uh, recommended budget. Um, also, in um, talking earlier, uh, and I know we're still a little ahead, but we need to change the April 4th meeting to April 11th. Monthly board meeting. Monthly board meeting. Uh, both Captain Kelly and I will be out of town for those meetings. The other two could make it. 
Oh, did they send out a request on no, that? No, I just did it when oh. you weren't here yet. This oh, this morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you weren't I'm okay. here. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Why? Are you going to Texas? <laughs> I'm going to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Well, April you know what? We usually 7th? don't on a said? Monday holiday. Oh. We don't usually have the meeting at Wednesday anyhow, uh -huh. and that's Easter Monday. It is. So we're yeah. changing it from, from April 7th to, to April 11th. 4th. Oh, April 4th. I'm on the wrong one. Sorry. Are we okay with that? Okay. Okay. So I need a motion to close open session. We need to get that online as soon as we can. That change. Jackie is mm -hmm. aware. I move to close, close, close the open session. Open session. session. <laughs> Second. Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you, and we'll see you next Wednesday.